In this lesson, we will study about Kosa Raju's algorithm of finding strongly connected components in a directed graph. So you can see one example here. This is a directed graph, and it can be cyclic. So that's why uh, it's a strongly connected. So just a reminder: strongly connected graphs are those directed graphs uh, in which, from any vertex, you can visit any other vertex. But uh, in this graph. this graph is not strongly connected but if you divide it into some a smaller subgraph you see that these components are strongly connected for example this region in green you can pick any of these four uh, vertices and you can reach any other similarly in 4 5 6 uh, you can reach from any vertex to any other vertex then 7 itself is a strongly connected component and similarly 8 so we will see a formal algorithm of finding this so i hope uh, this uh, definition is clear it, it's a maximal strongly connected subgraph so uh, you cannot find a larger subgraph so this is one strongly connected component this is another and this is third so i'm just repeating what we saw in this previous example so kosa raju's algorithm says that call dfs on the original graph so if you remember uh, we had seen pre and post visit times for different nodes uh, while doing dfs these are also called start and finish times or arrival or departure time or there there are many other names as well so if you have not watched that i would recommend you to watch that lesson uh, so once we have calculated the pre and post times or a start and finish time of different vertices then we find a new graph where all the vertices remain same only the edges are changed so if there was an s from u to v in this graph g then in g r what will happen these vertices will remain same but this direction will change and this will happen for all the edges in this graph so number of nodes remain same number of edges remain same only their direction changes so in code how it's represented So, if you are using adjacency list representation of graphs, we have a list of vertices. There will be other vertices, let's say x, y, and so on. So, there is an edge from u to v. That means v will be somewhere in the list of this. There may be other neighbors. When we reverse it, then there is an edge from v to u. So, uh, u will be in the adjacency list of v somewhere. so this is meant by reversing the graph we just change v is a neighbor of u we make that u as the neighbor of v so we calculate gr a new graph reversed graph and then we call dfs of gr uh and a dfs only visit the nodes when we trigger a dfs from a node it only visit the nodes which are reachable from here all the nodes may not be reachable as you can see in this example if you uh, let's say start a dfs from 7 from 7 you can reach 8 from 7 you can reach 7 6 and from 6 you can reach all these but from these there is no way out to these vertices so dfs will not visit all the nodes similarly if you do dfs from here also you will reach this connected component but not 7 and 8 so we have to uh, decide on which order we should start dfs so we will start dfs in decreasing order of their finish times and uh, while doing topological sort or even in the lesson where we saw this pre and post visit times i said that uh, if you arrange the vertices in decreasing order of their finish times then we get topological sort of that graph but that was uh, limited to dags that is directed acyclic graphs there we find topological sort but this is not a dag you can clearly see many cycles here that is the notion of strongly connected you can reach from here to here and from here to here so there has to be a cycle if there is no cycle for example in this case then it's just one node so there will be cycle this will not be a dag so it will not be proper to call topological sort in this case but the same concept will be used and uh, even in the code while writing we will see that we will write the exact same logic which we wrote for finding topological sort of a dag and just again reminder this is not a dag in this case but the same code will work so the way we calculate is that uh, we we start dfs from a node let's say u then we reach different other nodes from here so all of these nodes dfs will finish first 
and these will be u1 u2 u3 so these will get inserted into the stack first u1 u2 u3 and only if we are done with dfs on all the neighbors we push this u to the stack so this comes in the top so finish time is more for this as compared to all of its neighbors and that's how when we are popping from this stack we can only pop from the top so u will be popped first because its uh, finish time or post time is more so this concept we used in topological sort and we will use the same code here so this was third point and after that when we do dfs from a node we visit different nodes so when you do a dfs we also we will print that node so so we reach here we print it we reach here print it and after that uh, there is no other node reachable from here so we will have to start a new dfs so whenever we start a new dfs we can print a new line so that previous values were printed then there is no other node reachable from dfs this dfs so we can print a new line and then again start dfs again we will print a few vertices so these will be different connected components so this is the basic algorithm now uh, let's run through this on uh, one example then we will see why this is valid why kosarazu's algorithm works so let's run through this example so uh, we will start dfs we start from zero so let's maintain the stack the same concept that we used in topological sort we start dfs from here let's also keep writing the uh, pre and post times or start or finish times but if you are calculating it then you will not need the stack just uh, sort the vertices in the order of their finish time i am just writing here to verify that it matches so you start dfs at time 0 you reach here at time 1 you reach here at time 2 you reach here at time 3 then there is no way to go it's going to a visited node so you return at time 4 then from here you reach here at time 5 then 6 7 uh, then this is done 8 so let me also start inserting it so we came from 0 to 1 1 to 2 2 to 3 from 3 there is no way to go so this is now done this is in the stack we will push 3 into the stack and then we came back to 2 went to 4 5 6 now there is no way to go from 6 so 6 is also done so we insert 6 into the stack and then we come back to 5 there is no other place to go so we finish at time 9 and we are done with it and we insert 5 here now 4 will also terminate at time 10 so insert 4 into the stack then we come back to 2 from 2 there is no other place to go so we insert 2 into the stack then we come back to 1 1 also terminates and then 0 terminates so insert 1 and 0 then these all are visited so next we will pick 7 from 7 we cannot go to so this is 12 this is 13 then at 14 we reach here there is no way to go we can go to 8 sorry at time 15 from 8 there is no place to go so we will return from here we are done with 8 at time 16 and we will put 8 into the stack and finally there is no place to go from here so we will put 7 into the stack now you can verify that the largest finish time is 17 which is of 7 and 7 is at the top so when we will pop we will get this 7 first you could have done without the stack you when you keep kept track of this finish times just uh, sort it in reverse order and process vertices in that order then next is 8 and you can see then 8 has a finish time of 16 so we are just looking at the second component the finish time this is start time this is finish time 8 and next is 0 and you can see that 0 is the next one and you can verify that this stack correctly captures that so when you pop you will pop the vertex for which the finish time was largest now this is the reverse graph so this is g of r you can also verify that i have uh, reversed all the edges 
वर्डसेज रिमेन सेम दिस थ्री टू जीरो बिकम जीरो टू थ्री वन टू जीरो ऑल द एजेज हैव बिन रिवर्सड नाउ वी विल डू डी एफ एस फ्रॉम हेयर सो वी विल पिक सेवन सो लेट्स पिक सेवन एंड स्टार्ट ए डी एफ एस फ्रॉम हेयर सो वेन वी स्टार्ट ए डी एफ एस फ्रॉम हेयर वी विल ओनली विजिट सेवन सिंस ऑल द एजेज आर कमिंग इन टू इट सो दिस सेवन वी विल प्रिंट सो वी कॉल्ड डी एफ एस सेवन and this visited just 7 and nothing else so 7 is done next we pick 8 so let's cross it out we start dfs from here so it will go to 7 but 7 is already visited so it will just print 8 so next we trigger dfs from 8 and it just printed 8 so we are done with 8 also next uh we will pop 0 so we come here we start dfs from here so we print so we call dfs 0 whichever we pop we trigger dfs from there if it's not visited so 0 is not visited so we start dfs from here it will print 0 then it will go to 3 so it will print 3 then it will go to 2 it will print 2 then it will go to 1 and print 1 from 1 we will go to 0 which is already visited so these all are already visited so when we print we also mark them visited and we printed 0321 and there is no outgoing as to this component so these are not visited next we pop 1 but 1 is already visited next pop 2 2 is also visited 4 4 is not visited so we will trigger a dfs 4 so we will trigger dfs as many times as there are connected components so we start a dfs from here so we print 4 mark it as visited next we will go to 6 so mark 6 as visited and also print it next we will go to 5 and mark it as visited and print it from 5 you will go to 4 but 4 is already visited so we are done with it next we will pop 5 but 5 is already visited next we will pop 6 already visited pop 3 already visited now the stack is empty so we stop so uh, if you want to put them in some vector or list you could have done that but we will just print them and when we do a new dfs we will print a new line so that we can visually see that these were printed together these together so these form one connected component so you can see that this algorithm works and uh, we are able to get the connected components now we will see uh, why this works but before that let's see an interesting thing so if you draw all the connected components together so these are one connected component this is second and this is this is third and this is fourth so let's draw that so 0 1 2 3 0 1 2 3 3 from this component there is an outgoing as to 4 5 6 and 4 5 6 is another con connected component and from 4 5 6 there is no outgoing edge but from 7 and 8 are two other connected components 7 and 8 so there is an edge like this and edge like this so if you see that this has to be a dag why and uh, dag means directed acyclic graph so there should not be any cycle why because uh, let's say it was not a dag and there was a blue edge from one of these nodes to this then only there will be cycle so if there is an edge like this and these nodes are all connected to each other that is from any node we can visit any other node and there is an outgoing edge like this and from 4 5 6 also also they are connected so if there is an edge like this uh, then from any of these 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 we can reach any other node because let's say i want to reach from 1 to 6 and there is only an edge from let's say this edge was from 2 if you see this the edge was from 2 to 4 so there is an edge from 2 to 4 but we want to go from 1 to 6 so what we can do from 1 we can go to 2 since this is one connected component we can reach from any to any vertex so from 1 we will go to 2 from 2 we will go to 4 from 4 we will go to 6 so in essence 
you can reach from any node to any other node so this these will form just one connected component if there was an edge like this but we we see that these are different connected components so this kind of edge will not occur and there will not be any cycle so this will be a dag even if you uh, plot the reverse thing it will again be a dag it will be 0 1 2 3 just the direction is changed so this both g and gr are dags now we will see why this works so let's say we have 0 1 2 3 and then we have 4 5 6 then we have 7 and 8 this was the original graph and let's also draw the reverse graph this is the reverse graph so uh, when we do DFS so we are uh, arranging vertices we are keeping track of the finish time of vertices so uh, any node from where we do dfs and we reach many other nodes so all of these nodes x y and g which are reachable from you and we we have just came here these are all, are all unvisited so this x y and g will be finished first before dfs is finished from you so we will arrive here at let's say time 10 we have not finished with yet then we reach here at 11 then we reach here at 12 then we are done with it at time 13 then we come here go here at 14 we are done with it at 15 and then 16 and then 17 so you see that and you will be pushed into the stack after all of these are pushed so let's say they are inserted in the order y uh, z and x these are pushed into the stack it will depend on which order you visit them and only after that you will be pushed into the stack where we are which we are using for keeping track of finish times so after reversing the graph what we will do we will start dfs from u first before starting dfs from any of these so now let's see there is an edge from this component component 1 to component 2 we don't know from which vertex in fact we know but let's not bother about that from any one of these vertices there is an edge going to any one of the vertices of this con connected component so when we are doing dfs in this component sometime we would reach 2 in this case the edge was exactly going from 2 to 4 so when we reach 2 before we are done with 2 there is an outgoing edge to 4 this edge it goes to 4 so we are not finished with 2 yet think of 2 as this u and u here and these are 4 5 6 let's say there are more nodes below it we have not drawn it so when we are uh, starting we, we have just reached 2 before we are done with 2 we will there is an outgoing edge so we will come to 4 5 6 so these will be visited first and these will be inserted first in the stack and then only after that 2 will be inserted so uh, when we reverse it we will pick 2 first since it's in the it's above all of these so 2 will be above 4 5 and 6 we are just talking about one vertex not all of these so there was an edge from 2 to 4 so 2 will definitely be above 4 5 6 in the stack now we have reversed the direction so there is no way to go from 2 to this and uh, there was no back edge like this otherwise this would have formed one connected component so there is no outgoing edge from this component to this and we start dfs from 2 before starting from any of these so these are unvisited 4 5 and 6 and when we start a dfs from 2 uh, this component is entirely connected to each other so we will visit all of these first so we will visit 0 1 2 3 and there is no outgoing edge so dfs will terminate then 
then after some time uh, we will this seven will also be on the top of the stack above these because there is an edge like this so let's say we reached these first so i am going back one step again so we have seen that when we start dfs from any of these we will visit these now let's see about seven and four five six the relationship so let's say we reached four five six first so what will happen dfs will terminate first here since there is no outgoing h to seven so these will be inserted in the stack first then we will visit seven and seven will be inserted on top of this we don't know whether two is above seven or seven is above two but definitely both of them are above four five and six so this was the case when we reached four five six before seven in that case we end we finish dfs first and then we will start dfs on seven but let's say we start dfs on seven first then what will happen there is an outgoing is two four five and six so before we are done with dfs here we will visit all of these first then only the dfs on seven will terminate so seven will be inserted in the into the stack after these so in either case whether we start dfs first on four five or six or we start dfs first on seven seven will be on top of these in the stack so in the reverse graph again we will start a dfs from seven before starting dfs from these so let's say we next start dfs from seven and again it will only visit seven and then we will start dfs from four five six so all the edges that were incoming to this connected component in the original graph have been reversed so we can go from this component to other components but this ordering made sure that to whatever components we are going out so all the edges going out to all the different connected components will be definitely visit visited first before even we pick any of these vertices so from these we will visit four five and six for sure since these are connected but when we take this edge we will see that all these nodes are uh, already visited so we will not visit that similarly this edge will go to seven but seven is already visited so we will not visit that and in this dfs we will only visit four five and six similarly for eight so this is how kosa raju algorithm works now let's uh, write the code for this let's see the code and just a reminder uh, a prereq for this code will be to uh, know how to represent graphs its uh, vertices and edges and we will use adjacency list representation so if you are not familiar with this uh, please watch my uh, lesson on graph representations you can skip all the lessons on undirected graphs but this is the basic you should know this then you need to know how to do dfs on a directed graph and uh, we will be using recursive approach then it would be useful to watch the topological sort uh, lesson since we will use the exact same concept here only thing is that it is cyclic in topological sort video it was directed acyclic but there will be not even a single line of change in the code we will use as it is so it would be good if you watch that so with these and also uh, you can watch additionally pre and post visit times lesson although you can skip this so with these once you have understood these we are good to go now we will see the code for this and there will be nothing new here whatever we had seen so this is just a graph representation adjacency list and the function that we are using here is that this one so this should look familiar to you if you have watched the topological sort video so we create a visited vector a stack and if it's unvisited we start a dfs i have just renamed dfs to order vertices since in this case we are trying to find the order so in dfs we mark it as true then we visit all the neighbors and once these neighbors are put into the stack after that we push the current vertex into the stack so this should be very familiar to you so this call will return here and this stack will hold the vertices in that order finish time after that what we said we will reverse the graph so we reverse it here so let's see the code for reverse this is something new 
So there is no magic here. We create a graph with the same number of nodes. This MV denotes the number of vertices. And we check that uh, for each vertex i, we look at all the neighbors of i. All the neighbors of i means, so here this means that there was an edge from i to u. So what we do, uh, we push i into u. So now what will happen, there is an edge from u to i. So we have just reversed it. So if you understand this add edge function, which we have already used in all of our video. So this is just, so there is an edge u i. So we are calling add edge i u. So this is the same code. So this way we will reverse all the edges in this new graph and return that graph. So that graph we get here. And after that we reset this visited vertices. So now every vertex is again unvisited. And then what we did, if you remember here, we just kept popping one element at a time from this, started DFS from there if it was unvisited. And once we are done with that, we pop next element. See if it's unvisited, then again trigger a DFS. And when we trigger a DFS, we print it in a new line. So this is what we are doing here. So while the stack is not empty, find the top element from this. If it's unvisited, do DFS. And DFS is the simplest version of DFS here. We just mark it as visited, print it in the same line. And for all its neighbors, if they are unvisited, again trigger DFS. And when this DFS terminates, we print a new line. And this is the same graph. And then we call this SCC. So let's run it. So you can see that 7 is printed, 8 is printed, 1, 2, 3, 0 is printed together and 4, 6, 5 is discovered in another DFS. And this exactly matches with our answer 7, 8, then these 4, then these 3. Similarly, uh, now let's see the code in Java. So again, you should be familiar with the other lessons before using this one. So these all are older code. This is the code which is exactly same as topological sort. We are marking it as visited. Then we push all the neighbors into the stack. Then finally we push the current vertex into the stack. So this is ordered here and this stack holds those vertices. Now we mark all the vertices unvisited. Then we reverse the graph and let's see this again. So this reverse, we create a new graph of the same number of vertices and we just flip the adjacency list. So if u was neighbor of i, we make i as the neighbor of u. So all the edges are reversed. Then while the stack is not empty, we pop the top element from it and trigger a DFS from this. And in DFS, what we do, mark it as visited, print that vertex and visit all the neighbors of it. And when this DFS terminates, we print a new line. So let's run it. And again, we get the same answer. 7 is alone, 8 is alone, then 0, 3, 2, 1 and 4, 6, 5 which matches with our answer this one and four dfs are triggered the same is seen here also finally let's see the python code so again these are old codes this is the code of topological sort uh, mark the vertex as visited put all its neighbors which are reachable from it all the nodes which are reachable from it into the stack then put this node itself into the stack and this is what is done here then we mark all the vertices un unvisited. Then we reverse the graph. And again in the reverse graph, we are creating a new graph of the same number of vertices. And if in, the in this graph, original graph, uh, u was a neighbor of i, then we are making i as a neighbor of u and returning that graph. So we get that reverse graph. And while this stack is not empty, we pop the top element. If it's unvisited, we trigger a DFS from this. So this DFS is just printing that node when we first reach there and trigger DFS from all the other nodes which are neighbors of it. So let's run it. And you see that this answer matches with it. So 7 is one connected component, 8 is another connected component, 0, 3, 2, 1 and 4, 6, 5 are themselves another connected component which exactly matches with our this uh, example.